Well, our next guest is Mindy Vogel, who is Minerals and Geology Program Manager for the Coronado National Forest based here in Tucson. And Mindy's just finished up a panel discussion here at the Arizona Conference for SME talking about regulatory agencies. Mindy, welcome to the program. Thank you. And give us some sense of what's the role of the Forest Service in dealing with mining, exploration, and development on Forest Service federal lands in general. Okay. So with the, the Forest Service, part of the agency mission is that we're in multiple use, and one of those multiple uses is mining. And so there's a lot of laws, we have regulation, we also have policy and direction that all talk about and discuss how minerals management is a role in the agency. And so really our mission, you know, what my job is as a minerals administrator, as a geologist, is to, you know, work through the permitting process and making sure that we're in compliance with laws and regulations. Okay. And, and I provide information and um, as a technical specialist to the line officers, to the decision makers, to help them with informed decisions. Okay. Now, you're dealing with some of the most controversial mining projects in, in the state, and I don't want to put you on the spot and go into individual uh, proposals going forward, but the process is open for a lot of public feedback and input into this process. Mm -hmm. And so, how do you balance companies trying to get a project moving forward, the laws, the regulations that you've got to comply with, but also public input mm -hmm. and that process? Right. It's definitely a... Um, <laughs> It's a great question and uh, not always easy to do. Um, part of our permitting process when, when a proponent comes in with a, a plan, um, as I just got done talking, you know, we have steps that we go through in terms of taking it from you know plan submittal through plan approval and final closeout. And one of those steps is going through NEPA. And under NEPA, uh, really the intent and the purpose of NEPA is twofold. One is to disclose the effects of the operation and the other part is the public involvement. And I believe that's the part that you're, you're talking about here is the public mm -hmm. aspect, um, especially when the public itself is so divided in how they feel towards operations like this. Um, we definitely have a lot of people in the public that are very pro-mining and for it and want to see that happen. And then there's also the opposite of people that are against it and not wanting to see it happen. And you will find the folks in the middle that just want to make sure that, yes, we understand mining is something that can happen, but we want it done responsibly. And, and so we're trying, as an agency, it's definitely a balance of taking all of that input and um, having to kind of weigh it all. And luckily, I'm not the decision maker. I, I just help with the permitting. I don't have to make that final call. Um, but it, it's definitely not easy. And that's a lot of reasons it can take so long through some of the, the permitting is that we need to make sure that we are taking into account all that information that's out there. Um, you know, for example, with Rosemont, we had over 25,000 comments that came in. Um, that takes time to go through that and, and to make sure that we are responding to each and every single one. Okay, so you do have to respond to every one of those comments. We we can group them into, you know, this is these are all discussing water quality and this particular okay. aspect of water quality. And But as long as we've somehow addressed it and we've shown that we haven't overlooked their comment. Okay. So if somebody raises a concern mm -hmm. uh, about water or air or disturbances, um, you don't have to satisfy it to, or respond to their satisfaction necessarily. You have to determine, is that a valid concern? Has it been addressed completely or adequately? Mm -hmm. And then that's done. Correct. But if, if the person who's raised that says, well, it hasn't satisfied my complaint or my concern, um, how do you... Can they come back and raise that again? Yep, so we do have a process. So in the beginning through NEPA, we have public scoping, um, and then we go into a public comment period, and the public at that point will be, it will be gathering input from mm -hmm. them. Now, after that, we'll go ahead, there'll be a decision that's made, or maybe now under our new um, CFR 228, or excuse me, CFRs 218, we have an objection process. And so we'll put out, the agency will put out a, whether it's the FEIS or the uh, decision notice, if it's an EA, the public then has an opportunity to object to what we're doing. Because that document will also put out a draft decision document saying this is what we're proposing our decision will be. So the public then can come back and object and say, you know what, I don't feel you adequately addressed my concerns. 
and hear and you know and mm -hmm. and include more information at that point. Okay. So there is another opportunity through the objection process. The Forest Service will then, after the objections have closed, we go through a review. Again, maybe responding to some of them, and again, when our final decision comes out the public has another opportunity if they're still not happy with the way that the agency has addressed it they could always choose to litigate a project okay can you give us an idea of what's happening in rosemont without details but with hud bay now coming in and buying out the augusta resources in the rosemont project mm -hmm. has that pushed things back or changed the timelines or the process do they need to come back in and redo or do some things new because they're a new owner of this project so actually the process has been pretty smooth. It hasn't really affected our timelines at all because Hod Bay chose to accept what Rosemont had already put forward in their proposed plan. Okay. Now if Hod Bay would have came in and wanted to change something, mm -hmm. we very well could have been going back, but they just decided to agree to what was already proposed and okay. so it really hasn't affected anything. Okay, okay. What do you find the biggest challenges in the job to be? Biggest challenges um, with the agency. You know, we have limited budgets, mm -hmm. and that provides for limited staffing. And okay. so, you know, in times when the metal prices are high, we get a lot of proposals that come in. You know, I want to try to be responsive to everything, but I don't necessarily have the staff or resources to help with that. And so, I think that's definitely a challenge. Um, trying to meet the needs of the public in terms of what's coming in the door, but we just don't have the resources to necessarily handle that all the time. Okay. Um, okay. Is there any advice you could give uh, either to people in the mining industry or people in the, in the public who are interested and want to get involved in this? What's any suggestions that you say, boy, if I had a chance to tell these people <laughs> this, this is something I would tell them. Yeah, I think communication and preparation are really key. Um, making sure that you've properly prepared your proposal when you're going to come in the door. Work with us up front, talk to us about it, talk to other people about it. And then the communication aspect, I, I just don't know if I can state that enough. It's so important to be talking to the agencies, talking to your other cooperating regulators, talking to the public itself, making mm -hmm. sure you have a clear picture out there. Um, nowadays, I feel that you know having your baseline studies and and having all the stuff that you need to get through NEPA is only part of it, and really the the whole public affairs side is coming to be a larger play in that. And I really do think that there's a lot that needs to come back to the industry in terms of industry stepping in and you know having a voice and advocating their own side and helping with public awareness and not just for their project itself, but the industry as a whole. I think that'd be good to see. Okay. Well, I think you have a, probably a receptive audience here in, in understanding that message mm -hmm. because a lot of the, the opposition concern to some of these projects seems to be we're afraid of what it might do. Mm -hmm. So the industry needs to do a better job of explaining what those impacts might be or what they're doing to mitigate them. Mm -hmm. and maybe that would help resolve some of this at least. Right. I think it'll definitely would help. Okay. Mindy, thank you very much for taking time and joining us today. And best of luck in, in one of the most challenging positions in, in the whole mining field that you have. Thank you. All right, thanks.